A lot of horses do have some, some mental problems. We've been having a look this morning at horses coming out the starting gates yeah. and the difficulties in getting them into the stores and that kind of thing. And in the past, you've been quoted that that's part of the job you enjoy, trying to sort their minds out. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 I think if, you're, if you have a classroom of students, you know, a lot of them are going to be able, but they're, they're going to have psychological issues and mental issues, maybe uh, anxiety or anything. And you have to try and work your way through that with them. And that is, certainly that can be fulfilling when it goes the right way. It can be deeply frustrating when it doesn't. I think probably the one thing all trainers and jockeys probably detest the most is the horse that has the ability that doesn't try. Mm. That, is, that is the most heartbreaking thing. And you can try and do everything. At the end of the day, they just don't want to know. That is tough. But, uh, and then you'll have something else there that will always give you 100% every day. So uh, an honest horse that uh, happens to be sound, healthy, and, and, and very capable is, is what you're all aspiring to. Absolutely. And the other thing, of course, a trainer needs is a jockey on their side. And we should just very quickly talk about some of your riders because... A lot of us see you as the man who sort of almost fathered Frankie de Tory. You've had Steve Cawthon, Mace Roberts, and now, of course, you've got one of the strongest in the weighing room, Jimmy Fortune. Just tell us a little bit about them and, and what their plus points were and the difficulties. Frankie, I mean, tear away when he came across. Yeah, he's always been hugely talented. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And probably in terms of if you had to choose a jockey to ride in any country of the world, uh, there would be no one more able to adapt as quickly as he can. I think his time in America suited. I think he had a great foundation here in Newmarket uh, with Luca. When he, he then had a little bit of a mini crisis in life, but he was only a kid. Mm. And, uh, and, and that is perfectly normal. And uh, I think he then came to me, and, I, and uh, my wife, Rachel, was incredibly helpful on a number of issues. You know, there was a problem with licenses in Hong Kong and Japan and all of that. She sorted all that out. He came and rode, rode for me. He, didn't, he did shock me the first, because we'd had our meeting and made the arrangement. He said he'd be there January the 1st. He's going to ride the old weather hard through the winter, which he um, did. <laughs> but uh, on January the 1st, the front doorbell rang and I opened it, and there was this little kid there with a shaven head, and I thought, the little so-and-so he sent, his cousin, he hasn't come himself. <laughs> but it was Frankie, he'd shaved his hair off, he was going for it. God, he got cold, that's when he had to wear a little... Martha is there, but riding up on the old weather, and he rode 50 winners before the season started, and uh, he was leading rider with 230-odd. And he came back and proved that he could do it. Yeah, he's hugely talented. I think he's learned a lot from other jockeys. He learned a lot in America. Certainly, if you talk to Steve Cawthon, he would have learned a massive amount from Bill Shoemaker. He always said, who taught him the most? It was Shoemaker. And there's no doubt those, those great international jockeys, they're, they're quite rare. They're wonderful to be around, and we as trainers learn from them too. And uh, coming up more to the current time, Jimmy's fabulous rider, good rider, good jockey, good horseman, really level-headed too, which is quite important. You don't want the ones that blow hot one day and mm. cold the next. It's quite quiet, isn't he, Jimmy? He just gets on He's with it. He's a quiet person, gets on with it, yes. And I think to that extent, you know, there are a lot of talented riders around, but you, it's like a horse. You've got to have the mind with, ev or with everything else. And uh, you have seen some fabulous riders along the years, a lot of money too quick, get lost in the nightclubs, get running with the wrong crowd, wind up with a lot of personal problems that then affects their, their race riding. And I think what is important, and certainly viewers of racing will, will understand, that confidence of a rider is, is, is everything. That if they're riding with confidence, they will get the best out of a horse. But if their confidence is in any way impaired or damaged or they question themselves and they start getting in a race and they start second guessing themselves where do I want to be well I better follow him I better follow him already. and a little bit they start getting loud or they they just don't have that confidence you can see it and there's a hesitancy about it and there's no doubt that that is a, when they're in that situation probably a racing car driver if the car isn't performing or something's not performing that is a problem and that is something that all jockeys will go through all tennis players golfers any athlete, any footballer will go through it. They'll lose form. A horse can lose form. It's the same thing. It's an indefinable, but a lot of it is to do with self-confidence. Yeah. And I think to that extent, it's something you've got to very much be aware of uh, as if you're a trainer with a jockey. Certainly as a manager of a football team, he's got to watch that very carefully. Just so their body language in the dressing room, how they are in training. And it's something the more you're around athletes, the more you learn. And jockeys are athletes. Absolutely. And, and with Jimmy... Uh, we've all got our favourite jockeys. We always think of Jimmy as one of the strongest in a finish. He, he just looks incredibly powerful. 
but you're one of the cleverest trainers out there. Which, would there be one jockey that you, wouldn't, that you see upside Jimmy in the finish? Oh, Christ, it's him again. Is, is there anyone that, when they're close I up to Jimmy... I think there are certain jockeys in, in a finish that are, that are phenomenal. Uh, Jimmy's very powerful in the finish. Frankie, we're talking about he can eat that last little bit out. I think the art of it is to know what is left in the tank. Piggott was fascinating, who, who rode a bit for me. And he used to come out and see us in the winter at Santa Anita. I remember years ago when saddling a horse down at Kempton, he won the Jubilee Stakes, Indian Trail, I think his name was, for Jim Joe. And Lester rode him, he had a great long white stick, we're totally legal now, <laughs> evening meeting, hot summer's evening. And he won it, and he went round there, just in a second, went up, and he won it a neck, half length at the most. He didn't move, didn't move, didn't appear to move on the horse. <laughs> I was watching him behind his elbows. And as he walked in, I said to him, Lester, how much did you have left? And he said, nothing. <laughs> And that was that ability to just squeeze and squeeze mm. with his legs and his hands, just change his hands, just squeeze, and get every run out of that horse because you knew the horse. And if you'd gone with a mistake, you wouldn't find that inch. You might have knocked him off balance. So sometimes it's not all about power and action. Yep. It's about that ability to know precisely what's inside. The most indefinable in a finish is probably Fallon because he'll be whistling along on the buckle end of the rain and the boys will all say to the other jockeys the last thing when you're going for home you want to hear is this fellow come whistling up beside <laughs> you because he has that ability with Lisa just to know that to, to conjure that out and I think there are a lot of very talented riders like that the French have a very strong lineup of riders now and in fairness it's with interesting their... you say that because I think as British observers because they ride in a different style we, to use a better word, don't fancy the French jockeys that much. Yeah, well, I think, it, you know, they come to Epsom, it's not easy. And if they're, you know, if they're not the most respectful in the weighing room, they can get boxed in at Sandown, you know, these <laughs> things can happen. Um, so I think to that extent, it's, it's how they travel. But having said that, there are a lot of very talented riders there. In general terms, John, it's a question I often get asked, and I have no idea, and, and maybe you can't put a quantity on it, but how much is it horse and how much jockey? I mean, is it 80% oh, horse? Uh, you know, you only got to watch the Grand Prix now, haven't you? Last uh, Sunday in France, as Lewis Hamilton been winning in America, Ferrari come back to do some fine tuning. Suddenly, the Ferraris are going quicker. Doesn't mean that Hamilton is now a slower driver than he was in yeah. North America two weeks ago. No way. I don't mind how good the jockey is if he hasn't got the horse under him. It makes no damn difference. He might make it finish a little closer. <laughs> That's it. If it's not good enough, if it's outclassed, it it's doesn't belong in the race. It doesn't belong in the race. If the ground is wrong, if the draw is wrong, you know, these are all factors. That it's amazing how much the draw, even in middle distance races, affects the outcome of a race. Any changes in ground, any ground unsuitable to horses. You know, and you can have the best jockey in the world, but you need everything in your favour. And when you get to the better races, you really don't want to be in circumstances going against you because the line for error is small. And if a horse wins by a length, that's only about a fifth of a second. Well, that's not an awful lot. And a length is a comfortable victory. So I think to that extent, yes, those great jockeys make the difference in the development and the making of a horse and in the big races, but they've still got to be on those, the good ones. And you've got to be on the best horse on the day. And sure, you can get boxed and mess it up, but that's never bothered me. That's part of race riding. You know, there's no point in berating a jockey when you tell him to cover the horse up and he gets boxed in. You know, unless he ignored an obvious gap. I mean, but, you know, they know if it's gone wrong. And I think the important thing is, in race riding, it's like in car. You've got split-second decisions. And they ain't always going to be the right one. You know I mean? And the great thing is the jockey has the confidence to came back and say, made a mistake there. The worst thing is they come back in fear of <laughs> saying that. That is not good. That's unhealthy, because then they're going to try and find excuses which don't make sense. The best thing is saying, that didn't go right, or, poor, I don't know how to get lucky there, so and so <laughs> made a right mess of it, you know. Be honest with yourself, but the, you can't beat having the, the best horse. You really can't, in any way, on the day, in the circumstances.